And of course, this attack comes amid an increase of violence between Turkish forces and Kurdish militants in southeast Turkey and the government's recently launched campaign against ISIS. Soner Choptai is the director of the Turkish research program at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. He joins us now from Washington. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Now, this was obviously supposed to be a peace rally. It's ended in bloodshed. You have some strong concerns about Turkey and its current climate there. Just explain your concerns. Well, what is really unique this time is that uh, although Turkey is situated next to the Middle East, it's usually the exception rather than being the norm to Middle East politics. It has a strong economy, a big middle class, and a democratic form of governance. And yet what we saw today is a horrific massacre, violence that's unknown to Turkish politics. Uh, that comes within the background of a deeply polarized society around the identity of uh, President Erdogan. So this could increase, further increase polarization, but also is a dangerous start to violent polarization. And I hope that uh, we don't see further violence. But unfortunately, it looks like the polarization that cuts across Turkish society still permeates. What's going on here is that the President Erdogan is an extreme conservative and hard, uh, right wing figure. And he wins elections primarily by politically brutalizing his opponents, whether uh, jailing up dissidents and, or sending police to crack down on rallies. So uh, while his base loves that, his opponents now despise him. And I think you can talk of two Turkeys right now, deeply polarized, not just across party lines, but around the personality of the president. About 40 percent love the president. He's very popular with his uh, conservative right wing base. And he has delivered economic governance in uh, uh, bringing uh, wealth. But about 60 percent, though they are divided across party lines, despise the president. I think you are now seeing a deeply divided and increasingly violent country. And what worries me most about Turkey is that, although it is the exception to Middle East politics, it sits next to some really ugly neighbors, Iran, Iraq, and ISIS. And with that mix, I think uh, that dangerous days might be awaiting Turkey, unfortunately. And as yet, no one has claimed responsibility for this attack. But it's fair to say that uh, Turkey is no doubt worried about retaliation from both ISIS and the PKK. That's correct. Turkey has been targeting both groups. Uh, PKK is a pro-Kurdish group which has been launching terror attacks against Turkey since last summer. Turkey has been fighting that group. Today, the PKK declared a ceasefire just around the time of the attack. It's uh, interesting to see whether this tenuous ceasefire will hold because further Turkish fight with the PKK will only um, uh, deepen the sharp uh, fault lines in Turkish society of polarization. But even more alarming, of course, is ISIS. Uh, Turkey is now helping the United States against ISIS by opening its bases and also providing with airstrikes uh, from its territory. And I think that ISIS is an enemy to Turkey. Turkey is an anathema to everything that ISIS represents with its Western way of life and democratic form of governance and equality of uh, men and women in social life. And I think as a result of that, Sooner or later, it was, of course, not a matter of uh, if, but a question of when ISIS would target. So we don't know yet, but I would not be surprised if that group were to be behind this attack or, unfortunately, future attacks against Turkey. And so do you think uh, Turkey is powerful enough and doesn't have the security structure in place uh, to fight both ISIS and the PKK? I think it is. I think Turkey is a very powerful state. Uh, it is the second largest army within the NATO alliance. It is a strong ally of the United States. It has the backing of Washington and its European allies. Uh, that includes against uh, the newly uh, present Russian uh, military in Syria. So I think Turkey can withstand both ISIS and PKK threats. That's not probably the challenge that the country faces. The challenge is that Turkey's concerns over ISIS and PKK are now trumped by a very deep sense of political polarization over the country's future. The 40 percent that votes for President Erdogan and likes his conservative style of authoritarian form of governance, and the 60 percent that does not vote for him, Turkey is going for elections on November 1st, snap elections. And the question is whether the opposition, which is divided, will be able to win. They will not. I think Erdogan's party, uh, Justice and Development Party, also known as AKP, will still be the largest party. But it will probably be a hunk parliament where no party has majority. And in a society which is deeply polarized, a hunk parliament where no party has legislative majority is just bad recipe for political stability. And at this stage, that election is still due to go ahead in three weeks' time. That's correct. Sonia Chopter, thank you so much for joining us today. My and pleasure. For your thank you for having me over.